finally rid the world of you. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> we made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to and got our important books and necessities. First incident of the day. As I walked towards Zuzu and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall, something hooked on my ankle and made me fall forward. Whoa! Ow! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? Bitch! <laughs> Again? Like, what's up with this girl? Oh my god. The three of us looked back to see Lizette and her gaggle of girls. Lizette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! I felt the giant fire of anger burn in my stomach as I, star as I stared at Lysette. Day was not only the time this had happened to me, however, it was not clear who was behind the in these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lysette was a mastermind from just the look on her face. She was no friend, nor sh would she ever be. I had to do something. Get her a step up, stand up and walk away, glare into her soul. You know what, I'm gonna be the bigger person and just walk away. Fuck this bitch. No. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending like nothing happened. Anderson, you okay? That was a pretty bad fall. Yeah, I'm fine. A fall like that is nothing. I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know the pain rushing through my body from that fall. My arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, and I remained con- I rem- but I remained content-faced. I quickly ga gathered my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Come on, we're gonna be late for history. Zuzu and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding up to me. Naomi and Zuzu flanked me as well as we began to walk the class away from the g gaggling bullies. As we walked, I could barely see Zuzu flip a middle finger to the group behind us before the corner of my eye. Friggin' bunch of set feet lickers. <laughs> feet lickers? That's gross, Zuzu. It's true. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around because we obviously don't have live. Naomi and I could not help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Zuzu's words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Zuzu stopped. Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Zuzu, who was completely red in anger. Zuzu slowly turned her head to the group, glaring daggers at them. Shit. She's gonna beat them up, isn't she? The fuck did you just oh, say? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I had to act fast. I placed my hand on Zuzu's shoulder and gripped it tightly, knowing she could try to push me a hand away. Zuzu, they're not worth it. Just let it go. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Zuzu. I looked at Lizette and her group. Lizette had a wildly amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Ne nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't go gonna get us anywhere. Let's go. I grabbed Zuzu by the shoulder roughly, pulling her back to Naomi and me. Zuzu tried to step forward to the group, but Naomi held on to the other shoulder. We held on to Zuzu, who fought against our hands we, as we marched to class. Damn, we couldn't beat her up. <laughs> Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went without, without another incident. I went to class, had lunch, and, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From dad? I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go when I get there. That's kind of surprising. I quickly headed to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Zuzu. Hey! Are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay. I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. <laughs> yeah, alright. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to, s my dad texted me to say this. Why was he gonna pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. I waved goodbye to Naomi and Zuzu before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. I need to go to another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually, I played the entire album with no no one showing up. What the? Hey, Dad's never late, especially not this late. I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected, and read a signal disconnected error me message. What the? No signal error? How does he not have? S How do I not have signal? I double I double checked my phone and saw all five bars for signal. He must be in a 
dead so before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed my hands and feet and covered my mouth. I screamed into my I screamed into the hand I screamed into the hand over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusting and scary. Flinging their hands on me, I needed it to stop. Hey! Whoa. Don't dirty up Malix's prey. Oh, no. The voice, which sent a fearful shiver down my spine, whispered into my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. What's this girl's name? We still haven't known yet. I couldn't I couldn't find out what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I felt myself carried away somewhere. I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The doors were closed and I was taken, unsure of where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb, and as I was taken to the place I didn't know of, I couldn't even move my lips to scream. Sounds of sounds of zippers passed my ears, first of the interior of the car, then outside, then an echoey space with whispers and crack and crackles of uh, and crackles of people's vibrating through it. However, the wrap the wrap around my eyes was eventually removed from my face, and my bonds were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but I found myself in a warehouse. Surrounded by devils, including Malix, who was smirking at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Okay, I just have to say, this is kind of like, I knew this was gonna happen. You know, because after he showed up at the mansion, oh my goodness. Malix walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. We have magic on us, though, right? His his gun won't work, right? Oh, let's call for, um... That's it. Uzeris. All of a sudden, a bright purple light engulfed the room, causing the devils around them to cover themselves. What the? A gust of wind rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself, and standing, and standing my ground. I tried to peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. He, Eric, sorry. <laughs> as the gust, as the gust slowly started to die, the light bega began to fade, revealing Eric. Eric. Did you miss me? Yeah, hell yeah. I think you need to save me, though. However, the seductive smile and grace of his lips quickly disappeared as, it as he turned to Malix. As Malix lowered his arms, Eric glared. You really are evil at its core. Kidnapping an innocent woman like you did. It's disgusting how we demons are confused for your kind. Please don't hurt Eric. <laughs> Look at this little man whore Eric right here, boys. Might as well sleep with a disease. The devils around them laugh, including Eris. Who's Eris? <laughs> I felt a twinge of anger, but Eric must have taken it from me and added it to his own. Eric flicked his wrist and arm across his body, producing a small whipping noise through the air. However, Malix hissed and reached for his cheek, as if the air slapped him hard. What the? When Malix removed his hand from his cheek, I stared wide-eyed at the large slasher revealed on it. A mixture of red and black blood gently dripped down from his wound, causing Malix to growl angrily at Eric. So ho ho! Pretty boy thinks he has balls, huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, time to make this pretty boy a dead bitch. Oh my God. All of a sudden, sorry. All of a sudden, Malik lifted his gun towards Eric and pulled the trigger. I gasped and tensed up, not believing what I was seeing. As I braced myself for Malik's blow to embed him itself into Eric, however, a large urethra. Yeth it, um, thing, tendril, shot off in front of Eric's body, stunning from the ground by his feet. Quickly after the bullet evaporated into the t tendril, several others appeared, forming a dark purple crown around Eric's body. What the? What is that? Did you expect me to come unprepared the second time around? What the fuck is that? Thanks to my lovely princess, I can now use the full extent of my powers. Unfortunately for you, that means I'm afraid you will lose this fight. Whoa, this is cool. You cocky little shit! Malik charged up his energy and began to fire the bullet at after bullet at Eric in anger. 
However, the tendrils danced across Eric's body with ease, blocking each one as if they were mere pebbles to a wall. The remaining devils stared, trying to figure out what to do, help Malix or watch in silence. Eris, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as if she was watched with an amused smirk on her face. Die already! Eric chuckled before snapping his fingers, causing a row of tendrils to appear behind him, pointing their sharp ends at Ma Malix, who continued to fire bullets at the incubus. The tendrils uprooted themselves and floated in the air, straining out large spikes before quickly splintering into multiple thin spikes. I could only stare, completely lost in intrigue at the sight of Eric whipped his hand across his body again. At Eric's command, the spikes flew at Malik, smashing and stabbing into the body. They were thin, barely making pencil-sized wounds, and only, and only a few went into his body. The others scrapped and scraped against the skin and flew by. This didn't kill Malik, however. Malik growled loudly before charging at Eric, causing the Incubus to step back in a slight shock. Malik pointed his gun at Eric, closing the distance between them, and fired the barrel, almost reaching Eric's face. Instead of the bullet ripping into Eric, a large explosion forced both of each other away. Oh wait, forced both away from each other. Malik bounced off, bounced off the far wall and landed on his knees, groaning in pain. Eric, however, slid across the ground, landing on his stomach. Eric! <laughs> Malik slowly planted a foot onto the ground to stand, but froze before doing so, staring at Eric's body. Eric, on the other hand, slowly rose to turn to face Malik's head on. Eric reached a hand up, wiping the small trail of a small stain of blood that had painted the side of his lip before growling almost animalistically. At that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still in an energy. What could have been described as a tone of the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple, and red as everything be began to blend together all at once. How persistent. I guess I'll have to go all out on you to finally rid the world of you. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> Was this the extent of a demon power? My eyes never stayed away from Eric's face, however. Even as it changed, his eyes began to glow bright golden as Eric, as golden color as Eric began to walk towards Malik's. Let's end this. Malik aimed his gun and fired at Eric, but the bullet was never made, never made its target, as the shot interrupted. As the shot erupted from the barrel, the uh, tendrils erupted from Eric's back, creating a wing-like barrier from the bullet. Malik stared wide-eyed as Eric's tendrils absorbed the bullet and grew almost larger in size and number with each step Eric took. Eric's skin slowly began to morph and shift changing from human to something else entirely. Something about Eric grew dark and menacing, and this transformation was making him even darker. Before I allowed my eyes to see Eric's new form, however, a pair of hands quickly covered my eyes, instinctively. I reached up and gripped them, trying to pull them off. A voice stopped me. It's me. Don't look. Oh, Damien! I listened carefully and let the last two words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? Why was I being hidden from- what was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Damien's command. I could hear everything, however. I listened to I listened as Malik stood up with a pain grunt, and behind before before being pushed against the wall with another shout. After that after that came sounds of flesh ripping and blood spurting, only followed by Max's screams. Malik's, sorry. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. Eric, enough! Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The air grew silent as a pair of footsteps slowly made their way to where I was, to where we were. I just had to be sure he was dead. No use in letting him have a chance to revive. Whoa. You're getting sloppy, Eric. You've lost your glamour spell. Glamour spell? What did he mean? Why did Eric sound so different? Why was this being hidden from me? It's a spell that makes us look human. <laughs> Damien's reading her mind. I froze. Look human? They didn't look like humans after all? What did they look like? Like demons. As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of a cork popping out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. Ah, uh, there we are. Thank you, Matthew. I could hear a small clinking of glass being passed before hearing Eric guzzle down the liquid of some sort. The feel in the air around me gently began to warm up, to warm back up. Ins insinu insinuating that everything had been had been returned to normal. Finally, Damien moved his hands from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. 
The devils, including Eris, had fled. On top of what I assumed to be Malix's body was dirty sheet that was quickly turning oh what the hell that, that was dirty sheet that was quickly turning red from blood. I couldn't even I couldn't tell if the, even if it was a body. It seemed lumped together like a pile of parts. Ugh. The boys, however, had gathered all around me, all of them, including Eric, looking like nothing happened. What? What just? I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, and I felt like speaking was was, and I felt like speaking was impossible. Let's just get you home, Miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only nod. What had happened boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second guessing everything, lost in the sea of what and how and when. As we walked out the warehouse, I looked to Eric for some so form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Eric smiled softly at me before looking ahead, trying to look like nothing had happened. It was over. Malix had gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran over my body and the thought of never having to deal with that group again. At the same time, a ping of realization hit the back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Malix was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weighing down in my heart. It was late, but the boys let me inside to turn off the lights in the lobby. Finally, we can relax. It will be good to have some rest without devils breathing down our necks. So they're just going to act like nothing happened? <laughs> really? Ugh, I'm just tired. Can I hit the hay early? I think some sleep would be good for all of us. Hmm. I looked to, I looked to Damien, knowing he could read my minds, and frowned. I didn't want him to know about my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, bed sounds good. I wanted to just end tonight. Too much had happened, and I felt dizzy, just trying to figure it out. However, Damien spoke up, stopping all of us from moving. Should we be gone in the morning? The air became still with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. Please don't leave. None of you leave. <laughs> they had remembered their deal, and now were awaiting me for me to decide their fate. I gulped, face to face with the reality of the situation. The boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I had demanded. It was only fair, though, after all that happened. I looked to Eric, feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave, but would he ask to stay? I hoped that he would. I hoped that he would say no and ask me to stay longer. As if he knew what I wanted, Eric moved and stepped to me, gently moving strands of hairs from my face behind my ear. He stared into my eyes and spoke, and spoke gently, stroking my cheek. Princess, you've been such a wonderful help to us already. But I'm afraid that I must ask more of you. I've grown fond of being here and of serving you. Would you allow us to stay? You know, okay, can I say this? If Eric wasn't in love with my my character right now, I, I feel like he would just be using me just to get everybody to stay. <laughs> but I want them to stay, so it's all cool. My heart skipped while a large red blush ran across my cheeks. The boys stared at Eric wide-eyed, but I didn't dare speak out. Eric stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each board, trying to make a decision. Hell yeah, you're all staying, I don't care anymore. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again, and my life could return to normal. If I did decide to let them go, that would have been for the, the best. No goodbyes, no delays. But... Did I want to? They had done so much for me in such a small amount of time. They're staying, are you kidding me? I wanted them to stay. I wanted him to stay. I merely smiled, staring at the man I had come to have feelings for, before speaking at last. I would love it if you all could stay. The boys cheered tiredly, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited, despite the tiredness that ran equally through their our bodies. Today was a rough day. My home is your home, as long as you can stay and help with the chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing the terms I had set for them. Despite the good situation, I felt myself slowly slipping into un unconsciousness. However, James quickly clapped their hands together, getting everyone's attention to wake me up, making sure I didn't pass out on the floor. All right, everyone. We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall we? Oh! Yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. We've had a very long day. 
but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. We had a long day of uh, ripping Malix apart and then killing him, like, brutally, so I don't know. Sleep sounds really good right now. Yeah, man. I watched a very happy smile grow on Eric's lips. He shared my excitement, knowing that we could be together longer. Who, who knew how long we would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. Yeah! Hasbando! <laughs> the others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Eric alone at last. My heart fluttered a bit as Eric walked closer to me, gently wrapping his arms around my waist. I placed my hands on his shoulder, leaning close. Yet again, you spoil me. I'm very unworthy of you, princess. Oh, Hush, Eric. I wanted you to stay. I stared up into his eyes, getting lost in them. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my own growing attachment to him, but I felt myself lean into Eric's body. It invited me to stay a while, making me forget that the bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. No, it's fine. You did what you had to do. I understand. I had to accept everything while in Eric's warmth. He was real, and he was somebody I didn't want to be without, even if that meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore the memory further. Eric nodded before kissing my forehead sweetly. Come, let's get you to bed. Is he gonna sleep with me? Are you gonna come to bed with me? We're gonna bang? We're gonna bang yet? <laughs> I nodded before Eric gently lifted me up into his arms, like a bride, and carried me into my room. I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against Eric's chest, but eventually I slowly lowered onto the bed covered my and covered with my be bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked to Eric, fighting a yawn from escaping me, me as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Have a good night, princess. I'll prepare breakfast for you in the morning. Oh, he's so sweet! I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it was hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Help around the house and being with a man who I slowly start to fall for it would be worth it. Correction, demon. Sex demon. <laughs> I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let sleep consume me and I drifted into darkness in my mind. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. <laughs> oh. You are an interesting creature. What the f- Oh, okay. I opened my eyes to see a woman staring down at me with a very sly smirk on her face. I opened my mouth to scream in fright, but my hand quickly covered my mouth. Ah, ah, ah. No screaming now. Too early, silly girl. I could only stare up at the woman above me. She I still felt weak, not having the strength to move and fight her off. What was going on, and why was she here? Hmm. Why do the boys like you? You're unique, yes. But that can't be all that you have going for you. Um, excuse me. Rage began to consume my core once again. This woman, whoever she was, was making me mad. She must have known as she let another smirk grow on her face. Ooh, you're feisty. That could be why. Before I could bite her, her hand in anger, she removed her hand from my lips, standing up and staring down at me from the place next to my bed. She is kind of sexy looking, so, you know, I'll give her that. <laughs> I quickly sat up and glared daggers at the intruder. She was very beautiful, but I felt more anger than amazement. Who the hell are you and why are you in my room? The woman began to laugh, making rage inside me increase. I wanted to punch her, but I waited for her answer. <laughs> How silly of me. I forgot that we demons are not well known of in your world. You can call me Diana, little human. Diana? Demon? You're a demon? I am. But I'm much more than just an average demon. Okay. I know- I, I looked at the voice actors, like, after I played the game yesterday, like, the first time. I know that the, the creator of this, um, of this game is, um, actually vo voicing this character, so Michaela, um, you're doing a good job, and she, she kind of reminds me of Jessica Rabbit right now. <laughs> What do you mean? Silly girl. I'm a succubus. Uh-oh. I stared at Diana in sh shock. A succubus? First incubi, now succubus? Great. 
I had now met both genders of the sex demons. Diana crossed her arms under her bosom and looked at my body. Well, you are pretty, but you seem very reckless. Too reckless. Are we allowed to- <laughs> are we allowed to romance her too? I moved out and stood from my bed, still glaring at Diana. Why are you here? Oh, I just wanted to see who my competition was. Competition? For the boys, of course. They don't belong here, and yet here they remain. I want to know why, and remedy this little issue. This girl was seriously pissing me off. Issue? What issue? They were here to stay, so they can. Silly, uneducated human. You don't understand the important roles these boys play in the Abyssal Plains. You keeping them here is practically imprisonment. You have about ten seconds to leave. Is that a threat? <laughs> How cute. What are you going to do? Kill me? And if I do? You barely have the strength to stand, little human. I can rip the rest of your energy out and knock you into a coma. You'll never be able to wake up again. Touch me and I'll- Enjoy every minute of it. I felt my body freeze and heat up almost- in a painful haze, my mind began to feel fuzzy as Diana stepped to me and caressed my cheek. Now, you're going to listen to everything I say without any questions. Got it? I nodded. Good. I plan to bring the boys back to the Abyssal Plains. Why? So that I can take my place as queen of their realm. They have no reason to be here in this silly little world, so I'm going to make sure they return home. Okay, Pumpkin? I nodded it but growled. My rage couldn't be concealed, despite the hold I was under. You evil bitch. <laughs> Call me evil all you want, dearie. I'm not evil. You're just in my way. I felt Diana leave my lean into my ear and whisper, making me unconsci unco la la unconsciously shiver in both pleasure and annoyance. Now. Be a good little human and go to bed. I'll make sure they're gone before you get home tomorrow from You school. are not taking so my air. Sure say goodbye in the morning. I felt my body move on its own and lay it in the bed and cover myself with its bed sheets. I glared at Diana the entire way down. Diana laughed at my futile I'll get you. Oh, please do. <laughs> Whoa. All of a sudden, her voice deepened and became cold and de de demonic, sending a violent sh scare shiver down my spine. Her red eyes practically illuminated in the darkness of my room as she glared at me. Give me a reason to make your life a living hell. Oh, all right, calm down. I gritted my teeth, trying to fight back against the hold, sh the hold she had on me. She couldn't have been that tough. She needed energy to survive, right? I was just sure, sure she couldn't have had enough to hold me down forever. Diana then laughed and returned to normal. <laughs> oh, and make sure you don't tell the boys I was here. I want my visit to be a surprise. I felt the hold on me disappear, allowing me to sit up and practically growl at Diana in rage. What's stopping me? Then you must not care about your friends and family as much as you care for the boys. I stopped and stared. What did she mean by that? Was that a threat to my family? Diana smirked at me, knowing the confusion behind my eyes. Let's just say that. If you tell the boys about me, I'll make sure that no one will care for you. And you'll be all alone in this little house until the day you die. That's fucked up. I could feel fear creeping into me. Alone? How could she do that? The word demon reverberated in my mind, reminding me that I was facing off against something supernatural. A human with a shield versus a devil with one thing was one thing. A human on her own versus a demon was another. Have a good night. And with that, Diana sank into the floor through a magic purple pentagram, which, dis which disappeared as her hand vanished into the floor. I couldn't believe it. I had one problem, and now I had another? Instead of crazy psycho devil who wanted to kill me and the boys, I had a succubus wanting to ruin my life and take, away take the boys away. Could my life get any worse? No, I wasn't going to let her win. She's not as powerful as she looks. I know it. I had mentally confirmed it. She wasn't going to win. The boys wanted to stay with me. Damn right, alright? 
These are my men. <laughs> I let out a sigh before closing my eyes, affirming my plan of action. No matter what she was going to do, I was going to beat her. Eventually, the morning arrived and the sun screamed at me to get up. Surprisingly, I woke up before my alarm once again, which was nice. I stretched out and quickly got dressed, getting ready for school. She expects me to say goodbye to the boys. I will say good morning to, and we'll see them when I come back. No way am I going to say goodbye. I scooped up my bag and headed downstairs to the dining room, seeing their boys already eating delicious selection of food. The smell made my stomach growl wildly as the sight of the food drew me to walk further into the room. Good morning, miss. Did you sleep well? Before I could lie, hiding the in incident in the back of my mind, Damien furred his br eyebrows and, s and stopped eating. She's here. The boys looked at Damien in confusion, while I cursed the his ability silently in my mouth. Um, Damien, what's up with you? Of course she's here. She kind of owns the house. Damien looked at me, wanting to me to explain to him. However, the threats that Diana gave me last night warned me to keep my mouth shut. Ah, blah, 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 what do I do? Do I tell? Do I blah, 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 blah. Uh, I... Okay. I said in the beginning that I would go full smut and romance in this thing, so I'm gonna tell. I don't give a shit. Damien pressed his, his lips together into a fine line. The other boys looked at me with raised eyebrows. A girl named Diana came by last night. Diana? Is she important? Did she try to hurt you? She's a... Succubus. That single word made the boys stop and stare at me. I looked at each boy, unsure of what, what was going through their minds. Should I have avoided it? So, she's come to try and bring us back. She must really be desperate. Well, what should we do now? Nothing. She'll give up eventually. Will she? The boys continued to look at me as if I knew the answer to that question. Damn it, Damien. She said that if I told you, she would make my life living hell. She can't possibly do that, right? She's not a devil. No, she isn't. However, she is a very powerful demon. Fuck. She's a master of mind manipulation <laughs> and has been trained in illusion. Unlike other demons who use strength to get power, she uses her charisma. She has the power to make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. That's why she's so obsessed with us. What? What do you mean? Well, she sort of has family ties to us. She was promised to marry one of us in exchange for more power. Oh my god, it's one of those. She's just some whacked up hussy who doesn't know how to close her leg. <laughs> She's not a real threat. <laughs> Holy fuck, Sam. Savage. Oh, really? I feel insulted. The boys and I looked around the room, wondering where the voice came from. I felt a cold sweat run down my back of my neck in fear, remembering what kind of power she had. At last, we saw Diana in the entrance of the kitchen, juggling a single red apple in her hand as she leaned against the archway. The boys quickly surrounded me, glaring at the intruder. So, you took up a human name as well. Beautiful name, isn't it? Well, for a human name, anyway. What the hell do you want? To bring you back, of course. However, you weren't supposed to know that I was coming. I completely forgot about that little mind-reading ability. <laughs> My mistake. Diana pushed off from the archway and walked towards us, making the boys step closer to me in protective circle. Diana laughed. My, my, my. What has the world come to? A group of demons protecting a human girl? I'll tell you right now, she's not that pretty. And from what I can tell, she's still a virgin. Does that matter? My face grew red in a complete anger and embarrassment. How dare she? <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> I stepped up, gently pushing the boys away from uh, way to blah blah blah. I stepped up, gently pushing the boys away to be face to face with Diana. I was furious that she would it was able to what the fuck? She was about to feel my wrath. You are in my house. You are an intruder, and you have no power here. Oh really? Do I have to remind you of the power I have, dear? With the snap of her fingers, my mind suddenly locked up, and I felt blank. I could see the world around me, but I lost control of my body. The boys quickly reformed around me, with James gripping onto D Diana's wrist in anger. You will leave this instant. Or what? You'll kill me? I completely dare you to. Let me do it. I could use the workout. <laughs> Don't. The boys looked at Damien while D Diana smirked at my blank state. 
I want to fight this hold, but her power held me down. And why not? She wants us to kill her. If she dies, then civil war starts in the demon world. <laughs> Very good, sweetie. What happens in the demon world doesn't concern us anymore. We live here now. The demons will come to the human world and hunt us down before attacking each other. The demons will come to the human world all because of her? You sneaky bitch. With another snap of Diana's fingers, I was released from her hold, almost buckling it to my knees. Well, will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for the greater good. I expected the boys to say no. What I heard was a complete silence. None of the boys replied to Diana, which made me both nervous and fearful as to why. Diana leaned her head back a bit, surprised for a different reason. No. Well, I see. Was silence truly them saying no to her? I looked around at the boys and saw the disobedience in, the ar th in, in their eyes, giving me the answer. I felt my heart flutter, especially when I, my eyes landed on Eric. He kept, he kept close to me, glaring daggers into Diana. I could feel my heart. Comp uh, I could feel he was completely adamant in his choice to stay. I don't know what, but I was incredibly happy to know he wanted to stay. Diana sighed and pressed fingers into her temple, r rubbing it gently. Either all of you are playing a very convincing hard-to-get game, or you all must be out of your minds. Diana looked to me, lo locking her gaze with mine as if it was to read me. I could tell she wanted to do something, but the boys wanted to stop her, so the stare was her only available action. After a small moment of silence, Diana licked her lips before breaking the gaze battle and smiled at the boys around me. Very well. I guess I'll take my leave now. What? Her leave? Was she serious? The boys around me straightened up and grew confused looks on their faces as Diana stepped back and away from us with a small bow, flaunting her cleavage. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> with another world, with another word, a deep purple pentagram appeared at her feet and Diana's body slowly sank into the floor. As her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram vanished. At once, the boys relaxed and slowly began to return to their spots at the table, each in deep thought. She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us alive. Whatever. We'll just keep saying no. She can't force us to come back. She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually, she'll give up. That's the hope, anyway. Hopefully. Eric walked over to me and gently caressed my cheek, looking at me with concern. She won't harm you, princess. I promise. God damn your voice. <laughs> I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth, or at least a hopeful and comforting thought. Eric gently took my hand in his and kissed my knuckles, however making me blush and forgot what I was thinking about. The sound of the collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more, but as Eric cleared his throat, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers with, all, with his lips on my hand. He and I pulled away from each other as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food, waved to the boys, and left. Confident that nothing was going to happen. Never ever say that nothing will happen before the day is over. I avoided talking about the ride back home yesterday, saying that the ride was a one-time thing. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to school. I can't read. The girls seemed very happy. We entered the school, quickly gathering our things from our lockers and headed to class. There were no events to our surprise. History wasn't exactly fun, but our teacher was great. At least he would have been great if he... He was in class that day. Naomi and Zuzu took their seats around me. Zuzu in front of me, Naomi beside me. Before the class bell rang, the class was greeted by the dean. Students, you'll be having a substitute for class today. Everyone meet Miss Diana. I knew it! My heart stopped. At the door with the, with the dean was Diana, looking over at the students, smirking, as her eyes landed on me. She strutted to the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming the whispers from the other students before sitting on the wood crossing her legs. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. With a wave of Diana's hand, the Dean left the classroom, closed the door, and left the area. Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? So, history. History, history, history. Such a silly thing, isn't it? I mean, what do we care about the past? We're in the present. 
The rest of the class, including Naomi and Zuzu, hesitantly nodded in agreement, unsure of the new teacher, but was willing to listen to more of what she had to say. The present is so full of wonderful things. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. Her charm was almost infectious. The class was practically staring to eat her out of her hand. I looked around to see the classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together as I listened further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear as either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. You hear of the princess and the prince and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? This bitch! What of her friends? <laughs> The students listened and agreed intently to her words. I could tell, however, that words were for all targeted at me. The original story of the Little Mermaid, a perfect example of biased opinion. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince, but this prince has to marry a princess. What would happen if the mermaid had her way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? It doesn't matter what happens to the princess. I'm gonna keep quiet. I don't want to speak out right now. I keep my mouth shut. There is no way I was gonna let her get to me. Despite her being the teacher, I was going to ignore her. There was no telling what she could do if I talked back. Diana looked at me, expecting me to speak, but I merely stared at her. A smirk graced her face. A glare graced mine. I didn't need to fight. I didn't need to fight to win. It's still something to think about, however, as we think of this story. It's so easy to believe that the mermaid was the heroine, but what of the poor princess? Why should the princess suffer the antics of a mermaid? The princess didn't do anything wrong to her. More nonsense. I know this is also a subliminal message to me to make me pity her. My anger didn't allow any leeway to feel any pity for her. How long was she planning to drag this out? She wasn't a real teacher. Diana continued to rave about the injustice of the princess had to suffer through while the mermaid was in the prince's, uh, prince's sight. To Diana, it was injustice. To me, it was a fairy tale. The boy chose me. He chose me. She wasn't going to convince him otherwise. I wasn't going to let her. Diana stretched her arms, making an obnoxiously sexual noise that made some of the boys in the classroom shift in their seats. I rolled my eyes. <sighs> <laughs> Well, that's enough about fairy tales. <laughs> After all, the little mermaid was fated to Sorry. lose her prince in the original story anyway. Oh my god. It was for the better, though. The kingdoms, I'm sure, flourished, and the prince and princess lived happily ever after. Not a word. I'm not saying anything. I could tell she was trying to pull me to speak more and more. I knew she was wrong, but I wasn't intimidated enough to fall for her words and speak up. I decided to just watch and observe her f for the remainder of class. Her class had become a lecture and no one spoke as she sp spouted nonsense. Diana then stopped talking and looked at the clock on the wall, reading it quickly. This class has barely begun. Why was she looking at the time? Diana leaned against the blackboard and smiled at us. I became worried. You know what? School isn't important. Everyone, go ahead and head home. Take the week off. The students suddenly began to chat happily or in confusion of the situation. Many thought it was a dream come true, others knew better. Before anyone could protest, however, Diana pressed her fingers and pulled her lips and counted down with her fingers in the air. Three, two, one. The speakers of the classroom gently awoke, giving us an announcement we never would believed. Attention students, due to an emergency faculty meeting, we will be closing school for the remainder of the day and this entire week. Please leave the school quickly and quietly, and have a good rest of the week. She used her powers on them. Damn it. I felt like I needed to stop her, but how could I st stop a demon in the middle of a public area? Diana smiled before gesturing to the door. Have a nice week off. School will resume next week. Many of the students filed out, chatting with each other about the new impromptu plans. Zuzu was beyond happy, but Naomi was hesitant. Before she... Before we could pack up and leave, however, Diana st stepped Diana stepped to us. Excuse me, little miss. I'd like you to stay a little while. There's something we need to discuss. As Diana looked at Zuzu and Naomi, she snapped her fingers, making my friends tense up. You two can head home. Don't worry about your friend until next week, okay? 
If you contact her, she won't reply, so don't bother. If she contacts you, ignore her, because she's just fine. As if on command, Zuzu and Naomi left the room. I tried to march after them, but Diana stepped in my path, wanting me, warning me with her eyes that if I followed, there would be hell to pay. I had lost my two friends, or at least for a week. Diana and I were alone, just like she wanted. I slammed my hands on the desk in front of me and glared at Diana. What are you doing and what are you thinking? What? Do I not make a good teacher? I figured you should have a little lesson, so I took matters into my own hands. Whatever you're trying to do, it won't work. You really think so, dear? And what makes you so sure about that? What makes you so- what makes me so sure? Why are you so confident? Were the boys worth this? My thoughts began to fill with doubt. All the uncertainties about this whole ordeal began to cloud my mind. If the boys were to ever find out, they'd ever- they had hell to pay. Was it worth it? What about Diana? What would she do to me? Would she make my parents forget about me completely? Would she ruin my friends' lives out of spite? In my gut, I felt the stone confidence to try and fight back, but the heaviness of my thoughts began to dissolve that stone little by little. What was going on with me? I looked up at Diana once again to see her gaze boring into my eyes. She was using her powers on me. This time, I was away from home, so I couldn't escape. Or could I? Did I want to? The way she stared at me made me feel warm and fuzzy inside my chest. I felt like I was melting. Diana lifted a hand under my chin and ran her thumb over my lips, licking her own. I could feel little struts of energy zipping from under my skin into my chin, where she held me. Now. Let's have a little taste of that sweet, virginal sexual energy. Whoa! Oh my god. I watched as she leaned in, ready to kiss and take me my energy. Half of my body felt... El, uh, felt... Ella... Felt at the idea uh, <laughs> that uh, the other half rejected it and didn't want her to even touch me. E Eric! Suddenly, Diana stopped in her tracks. Eric? Who is... It dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why did you tell me which boy is Eric? I felt myself not in com compliance. The, the second... Diana giggled in reply before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The sly second? With you? Damn right. I nodded once again, but it was time to part... But this time partly on my own decision to reply. Diana let out a smile. Diana let out a s sound that's mimic of the cat's purr before stepping away from me. All right, then. Well, if it's the second son you're infatuated with, you should really rethink your romantic options. Diana chuckled before kissing my nose, where I left a shot of energy zapped out of my body, almost making me feel dizzy and recoil. Diana turned to the desk and sat on the wood, crossing her legs. You can go now. Remember... No class for the rest of the week. And how am I supposed to get home? My two friends left here with thanks to you. Oh, were they your ride? <laughs> My apologies. Let me help then. Diana then lifted her hands and snapped her fingers. I suddenly felt the floor sink from underneath me, forcing me to look down. A purple pentagram surrounded my feet, pulling me into the ground. Whoa! Before I could fight, however, I fully sank into the floor, fading into darkness and shutting my eyes. As I opened them, I felt my I felt my silk sheets around me, soothing my anxiety from the darkness that had previously surrounded me. W what the? Why did Diana bring me to my home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. I sat up in my bed, looked around. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Diana's? too strange. Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to get the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever, despite my logical thought in trying to piece the puzzle that D Diana got together. The more I tried to solve her, the less I understood about the situation I was in. I was interrupted, however, by my door suddenly opening, revealing that the boys with Damien's hand on the doorknob. Miss, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in school? I furred my eyebrows and stared at Damien, asking him to answer their questions through my thoughts. Diana sent her back here. She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. What is that bitch up to? Seriously! Diana- Maybe it's part of her plan. Whoops, I skipped by accident, sorry. 
The boys continued to argue, argue back and forth about Diana, feeling almost jealousy, curious, me. La, 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 la. Feeling all, an almost jealousy and curiosity in me. Damien seemed to be too deep within the talking to notice my thoughts, for he didn't even stop talking alongside his brothers. Why was Diana after them? Why did she want to bring them back? What was that so important about the boys that she would travel into the human world to get them? What was going on? I decided enough was enough. I needed answers. Hey! The boys stopped arguing, staring at me in surprise. I held my hands and the fist in my lap, muttering up the courage to continue to speak despite my abrupted shout. Why is Diana here? Why does she want to bring you all back? What exactly did you run from? Why did you run from it? Miss, we... Don't miss me. Please, I need to know what's going on. I won't be left in the dark about this. I want to know what I'm facing. The boys looked at each other hesitantly, unsure what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards my bed, making him buckle and land on his knees, with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien, do the thing. What? The thing? What thing? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything. Especially if Diana is targeting her. Sam's right. I guess we have no choice then. I was getting confused. What was Damien about to do? Damien stood before climbing onto my bed and sitting across from me on his knees. We are going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will stop. Uh, okay. Vision? Princess, please trust him. Alright, Eric. I looked to Eric, unsure what was going on, but I nodded. If this was the only way to learn, then it was my only chance to know. Damien gently placed his hands on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into the skin above my eyebrows. I could only stare at Damien as, he began to as his eyes began to glow gold, and energy began to be both pulled out of me and forced into my head. Within seconds, my vision went black once again. I was unsure of what Damien was doing, but as soon as shapes and texture slowly began to appear around me, I found myself sitting in the stone, f stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fantasy throne room. Where am I? I looked at myself, standing only at the body of the translucent uh, as a ghost. Whoa! I jumped up and, and inspected my hands in a sudden panic. I was see-through! Why? What was going on? How dare they try to negotiate with me? Do they not know whom they speak to? I gasped and ran behind a nearby pillar, away from the voice. The sound of his anger and his uh, words frightened every bone in my body, turning me into a frightened child. My lord, please calm yourself! <laughs> the voices... Calm? You're merely testing my resolve. I have more than half of a mind to send my greatest armies to take what should be mine. They are mere insects in the way of my kingdom's expansion. They merely asked for a marriage joining. So I'm to bow to them and share my land that I have so rightfully conquered? Whoa. I peeked from behind the pillar to see two large demons covered in royal clothes, but buff enough to be military commander. His rage was practically in, in, at, in the bed uh, from his body and grovelled at his servant. They are willing to give their land to you, sire. All they ask is for one of your sons to marry their daughter, whom I might add is as beautiful as can be. This is ridiculous! To suggest that I need their approval to take their land is beyond insanity. What makes them think I care about their precious daughter? Did I mention that she is a prodigy of her kind, sire? A prodigy? Yes, my lord. This succubus is a master of her skills in magic and mind manipulation. She is said to sway armies with a snap of her fingers, mm -hmm. despite being as young as she is. Impossible! If only it were, sire. This succubus is dangerous, but would be a great asset to have should we agree to this arrangement. The only reason she cannot phase you, my lord, is because you are the strongest demon in the plains. Is this supposed to change my mind? Yes, my lord. You are doing a terrible job at convincing me. Their dad has nice abs, just saying. <laughs> my apologies, sire. I was lost. I could tell that they were talking about Diana, but why? Father. I quickly turned my head to see another demon who looked like a mere child. 
staring at the demon commander on the throne. Father? Ah, Raystrow, have you finished your training? Yes, Father. Then what do you want? I want to be with my brothers the best of the day, Father. The demon commander, the demon commander walked to the young demon and gripped his hair, picking him off the ground and forcing him to look in the, at a snarl. The young demon, however, was looked unfazed. Huh. Arrogance. Why should I allow you to be with them? I should kill you for your lack of respect to me. Because I want to be with them, father. I could only stare as the young demon's face faced his father. Despite his massive difference between them, this young demon seemed weaker and easier to kill versus the demon commander. Why would this man kill his son, though? Was this commander that ruthless? The the the, the dad is like like our dad. They're both dicks. However, I wasn't expecting him to laugh and release the young demon. <laughs> Good! Assert him even in the face of danger! That is why you are my favorite son. I can only stare wide at as the commander placed his hand on the demon's shoulder. Very well. Go. Tomorrow, you will show me your training. The little demon grinned wildly before running off. I have a thought. Yes, my lord? How old is this daughter? As old as your fifth, sire. Do you believe this proposal is worth it? Yes, sire. Tell those insects that they are safe for now. I will consider their offer. Sire, are you certain? Did I stutter? Now go! The demon servant quickly ran off, but as soon as he passed the pillar I was hiding behind, he and along the commander vanished into thin air. What the? What happened? I didn't get time to try to figure out what out before with the demon, who looked around my age, walked into the room reading a book. Is that... Face trial? Your nose is stuck in those books. Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? Huh? That voice. I circle around the pillar to see a second demon leaning against another pillar, smirking at Raystro. Aren't you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? I am, but I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- Attack! What the hell? All of a sudden, three shadows zipped through the room and slammed into the Raystro, forcing him to fall on the ground and drop his book. As the sight cleared for me, there were three other demons in a dog pile with Raystro at the bottom. Get off! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid books! It's time for punishment! Death by Brotherhood! Oh my god! No more reading! <laughs> They're so cute! I told you that you were in danger. I'll, I suddenly knew who the, these demons were. It's the boys. Even in the demon world, their brotherly connection was astounding. They were merely younger versions of themselves. One of the demons, who I assumed was Matthew, grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Raystero? It's all about war strategy. It's boring. I have to, Zakaro. Get off! <laughs> There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all! Take no prisoners! You sound just like father! <laughs> I couldn't help but giggle. It was cute to see them acting childish with each other. Eventually, James managed to push off his brothers off of him and stand brushing himself off. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind. But I have to... I know you want to, Raystrow. Damn it. Right? What is going on here? Uh oh. I, sh I shot my hand to the voices to see the commander aged a little, staring at the boys with his arms crossed chest. Damien quickly dashed and hid behind, the s behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder to see the large commander. Nothing is going on. We just passed by each other. Then why does your brother have your book? I was showing him what I was learning, Father. Return to your studies, Ray Strau. The rest of you out of my sight. Do not disturb your brother again. I could only stare as James gently took his book without looking at his brothers, returning to reading. The commander walked past the remaining brothers, growling at Sam and Damien before leaving the room. What was up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. Hmm. Ezra, you're quiet. What did you hear? He's going to a negotiation meeting. 
He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. No shit. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. What about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. Is that how that works, really? Well, what should we do? Before the conversation could continue, the boys vanished into thin air, fading into different colors of mist. They were replaced by older Damien Matthew and Matthew, sitting with each other in the middle of the throne room. Do you think we should? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I really want to. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Raystero, since he's the one about to be married and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zikeru. Maybe she's said to marry you. No way! I don't want to get married! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. <laughs> they all look so, like, weird, <laughs> but I love it. What are you two talking about? Oh shit, I skipped the part, sorry. I looked over to see Sam join the duo, crossing his arms and raising another eyebrow at his brothers. What are you two talking about? We got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. Give humans too much attention. No way, you gotta listen. They apparently have stores and books and schools and stuff. So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh, the one we were talking to wasn't like that. How do you know, Zakeru? Because I do! What is going on here? Damn, damn, James looks hot. Sorry. <laughs> they want to go to the human world. The human world? Reishiro, think about it. You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore. You could be with us, and we can make lives for ourselves in the new world. Now you're just talking nonsense. I vote that we do it. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh my god, I like this. They're all shirtless. This is, this is, um... Yep, this is making me happy. Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. <laughs> Ristro is in. What? Azrael? Whoa! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work, but it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! Who? Oh, he'd definitely help us. I'm... I'm not so sure about... <gasps> oh my god! Is it the grandfather? Reistra, aren't you tired of pleasing father all of the time? I am, but... If you stay, you'll be married off and become ruler of father's kingdom. You'll have no time for yourself or with us, and you'll be constantly at war with the other realms for power. You'll most likely turn into the spitting image of father. <laughs> What he's saying is, get your head out of your ass and let's go. If you don't say yes, I'll drag your princely ass with us. I don't care what that bastard of a father wants. Come on, Reisuro. All right, let's do this. What's the plan? I couldn't believe what was happening. I was seeing the history of their lives before my eyes. They were nobles, and James was the heir to the kingdom that the, the commander ruled. Even more so, he was going to be married to Diana. They sacrifice everything to leave and be together. They'd rather be free than remain in their noble rules. I started to feel a little jealous. They were able to leave while I was expected to do what my father wanted me to be. How were they able to leave was uncertain still, but I knew I would learn it in time. I closed my eyes and mentally asked Damien to end the vision. As soon as I asked, the world around me slowly vanished. I was brought back to the bed where I sat my head and nestled in Damien's arms. No, I don't want to shoot myself! Do I actually have to? Oh god! And then game over, that's it. <laughs> he found his tongue wandering inside her mouth, exploring slowly as she- <laughs> I'm sorry, let me do that again. He found his tongue wandering in 